All right, I've been asked questions about these controllers, hooking up them to the 2811's LEDs, which are right here. These are with ICs built in. Don't know if you can see them here. Um, you got your data line, which is green. You got your five volts, and then you got your ground. Data line goes straight to the box. No other wires connected to it. And then you got your ground. And ground, you need one wire that comes in for power supply. And then you got your blue wire ground that goes straight out to the LEDs. You can't really see it there. It'll be it'll be listed on the ribbon when you get to looking at it. It'll say ground and you just hook that up to your controller that way okay now your power which is positive red right in the middle goes out and I just soldered it real quick onto the power supply I'm using a computer power supply that will deliver about 30 amps okay so the controller real quick this one, because it's a B series, um, there's S and there's also A, T1000 S and A, so, so there is a 5 volt input power supply, which came with this one, was 2 amps, this little unit only uses about 3 watts of power, so then you have your SD card, you have your set, your mode, your speed, negative and positive speed so that's very good to have control of those and you have to set it up on uh, the LED editor 2012 so it's basically very simple hookup as far as I know the further you get out of course you lose your voltage like normal with DC current because it's direct not alternating but what I found with my 550 array, close to 600, I was going to put 600 on there anyways, is that toward the end, you want to run a ground wire. Just solder on a ground wire and go straight to ground of the power supply, not ground to this controller, but to the power supply. And then I'll act as more of a steady current for the rest of the field so it's not because DC travels you got positive and it wants to loop to negative basically you can also do a positive I'm pretty sure on the end of that too and it wouldn't hurt it it's mainly getting its data signal from one wire and it's bouncing three waves on top of the data signal in other words it's kind of like your Ethernet cord. It's got multiple inputs on one leg. It's three frequencies bouncing on one leg of power, which is very interesting that it's able to do that. But this little strip is only 30 LEDs here. A couple of them are kind of shoddy. I've been marking on them, as you can see, to say, oh, this one's good or this one's bad. Just doing tests with it, running through programs and stuff like that so as I mentioned before this unit does have an auxiliary power supply for just powering up the box and then you do your driving with 30 amp big power supply off of a computer which you can get the switching power supply which is more efficient I just got a 10 amp that came in and I'll use it probably for a little test one roll of this, 5 meters long, which is 16.4 feet, uses about 11 and a half amps. If they're running at full efficiency and full power, in other words, like white, white uses all the colors to make up one, red, green, and blue. So, you remember that if you're going to be running quite a bit of white LEDs and color modes that are using couple colors 
or all three of them in variation to create another shade or color I should say um, you definitely want to run a bigger amp power supply I suggest the 5 volt 30 amp power supply probably to run um, two or three ribbons depending on your um, input of how many you know colors you want producing at the same time um, most of the time though um, if you're doing a reader board like I was you're probably only going to light up one third of the LEDs that you're running and they're just going to be running along saying something and changing colors in those modes so they're really not going to use the true 30 amps worth of power to light those LEDs up for that split second but it's nice to have overkill power supply because a switching a good switching power supply will recognize the difference and it make adjustments and not burn out the LEDs or anything like that which it shouldn't because it's 5 volt remember this is 5 volt system these are individual addressable LEDs these are not dreamer colors or um, any of those others that one chip controls three LEDs that's what a dreamer color is because these are individual I should say um, controllable so it has an IC built in this one does these are nice because there's only one data leg and that's all you gotta worry about really so positive and negative and ground you definitely want to ground it to the controller and basically the positive never gets in line with the controller except for powering up the controller if you have the other kind of controllers this one because it's a B it has its own power source now the S and the A they can run off the power source of the power supply that you're going to be using you could probably do the same thing with this B but the thing of it is is that usually the B's come with their own power supplies and they're about 40 bucks for them and they're kind of nice but just to let you know there is not much difference the programming there's a big difference you do need to go into the editing program um, some people are doing that on YouTube and there's instructions you'll learn some tricks of it it's a lot of tinkering around I had trouble with it at first thought I really had a bad problem but it just ended up that I had some of the ICs that got fried on me because either the power supply that I was using surged and we've been having power surges where I'm at um, and gave it 12 volts or I hooked it up wrong one time and it blew out 25 of these LEDs so just to let you know you gotta watch it um, they do need the regulation that's why I went and bought a good power supply and stuck it on there this computer power supply works but it's an old one it hisses a little bit I wouldn't trust it to run an array of LEDs very long and it's just you know something I use to make do for testing and stuff like that so I'll plug this thing in first I'm plugging in the controller now you'll see on the side here it has a, a power light and an air light the air light it went off as soon as I plugged it in pretty much it went on and then for a split second it was on there and then it went off that means it's reading the code on the SD card correctly so and you get your power light that is good so the power light should stay on steadily and then when I come over here and flick this power supply on you'll see on the ribbon you'll hear the hissing of the transformer a little bit well that's pretty bright on this camera um, this will light up the whole strip it'll do its different little modes it's pretty bright on the camera we'll try to, to do sideways here you'll notice that this LED I believe here and this one here if I remember correctly 
that there is um, red that is out on those two LEDs. So it won't do red because of one leg of the, uh, of the IC that controls that LED chip has been burned off or something or other. Anyways, it's a really cool thing to play with. I recommend everybody getting these type. They're expensive, yes. They're about, well, the supplier I got it from was at one time was $93. Then they rose the price up to 99 so with free shipping to the U.S. But um, the other ones, the I think they're 2801s, they're nice, yes, but they only have a chip per LED, and there's 32 of them per meter, so you really don't get that much money you know, bang for your buck, I guess you would say, on LEDs. So, it's pretty cool. It's fun to play around with. Cameras are pretty hard to pick up LEDs. And then there's different modes 